it's such a weird, great, disgustingly great city that ha I, I, you can find things to love or hate anywhere you've dropped into. I, I have a thing with, with um, people talking about Greece and the, oh, it's an artistic hub, or it's the new Berlin, or it's the new Brooklyn, or it's the new something. Um, I, I, I'd like for each city to be that city. I don't want a city to be something else. As far as it being, as far as Athens being, the new Berlin, which people write, I think that's really uncreative. Uh, you know, uh, a, a title for, for an article, which I've seen in, in so many magazines, you know, Athens is the new Berlin, Athens is the new New York. It's never gonna be any of that because you know, in Athens you might have a cool city, which you've always had, and then you go swimming if you want. So it's way cooler than Berlin's ever gonna be. It's way more livable and accessible in, in every way than New York is. Uh, there's no fucking way that you can easily live in New York. I mean, when, when the winter hits, you know, you're, you're pretty much inside, and if you're, you're wanting to be outside, you're gonna freeze your ass off. That, and that's the reality. Athens is not Berlin. Uh, some people are giving this impression because there is a kind of a, I would say, somebody's trying to channel that people think that it can be because there is this kind of like easygoing, a feeling. There is a lot of like artistic voices and there is a lot of easy ways to express that. Because Athens is an improvisation city. You can have an idea and you can find a way to express that idea with, a, with any means possible. Athens can be the new Berlin if people are ready to put their body in a precarity. What I mean by that is that why people are saying that? Because many artists moved to Berlin due to uh, kind of rent controls, that the rent were much cheaper than New York or other places, due, due to space, due to like central position in Europe, but also due to welfare state. There are many people that are moving here from the artistic part, but they are not looking the same thing that they are looking in Berlin. What they're looking here is to be part of this political struggle that we all are, and these people are very welcome. Athens is Athens, it's always going to be Athens. It can't be Berlin, because it's not in fucking Germany, and Berlin isn't in fucking Greece, so neither city could be either. I'm really not a fan of the whole Athens is the new Berlin uh, mantra. I, I think it kind of misses the point of the actual financial crisis and what people have, have been through essentially. Because I think in order to have a strong cultural kind of hub, you also need to have like a lot of young people. And I think so many people and artists that I know have actually left Athens during this time. And it's actually very hard to make ends meet being a young artist. So I think a lot of people from abroad are coming in because it's, a, you know, it's cheap to live in Athens and there's a lot of interest in Athens in a sort of disaster porn sort of way, which I find really distasteful, <laughs> personally, but I can tell that it, it's an interesting place if you're an artist, but at the same time, I, I don't like that sort of tourism around the financial crisis that has developed. I find it really, I find it really kind of demeans the actual, you know, experiences of the people that live here in a way. I think the new Berlin thing is, I mean, I get that it's annoying because it's been used and overused, but I mean, the reason I think people say that is because I think what Berlin was, was a situation that created an opportunity for creativity. And I think that is happening in Athens now. The crisis does kind of create that opportunity in two ways. I guess, first of all, because like, for example, you might get real estate that is not expensive. So artists can come in and rent studios. Um, and then the fact that they're here makes it an interesting destination to visit as well, so it creates kind of a scene in itself. But yeah, so I would say it is, um, there is a kind of an inf a creative influx happening at the moment, yeah. I really like these interventions in the city. I really enjoy the way that the dialogue is taking place. We are in Exarchia now and so often I get informed about the city vibe through the graffitis and through the stencils and through these kind of papers that they're intervened in the streets. And I think it would be a pity 
if uh, this will get erased. The municipality, if they're trying to erase it, they will put their money in the wrong place. They, they will find the wrong fight. I remember with Documenta that as we started, uh, somebody did a stencil just under the door of where we are now in our offices and it was saying something, I don't remember exactly the wording, but it was something like, Dear Documenta, don't exoticize us to raise your uh, cultural capital. And um, I find this beautiful, you know, I find this beautiful. So I, I think that as long as graffiti also in one way or another respects some of the places that there shouldn't be part of because now we are not anymore in that kind of affluent um, uh, situation that we can erase graffiti when we had to. I know that graffiti for a lot of people is an attraction but it's also tagging and excessive tagging the way that it's done in a lot of neighborhoods of Athens is also actually a deterrent for a lot of the tourists that come through because they associate a ton of tags with like a, a dodgy neighborhood essentially. So I think it works both ways. You get a lot of people who are like, wow, this is a great graffiti culture, and I get that. But then on the other hand, I think excessive tagging is not fair on the shop owners or the residents or the actual users of the building. Do you? So I think um, it's easy if you have a good anti-tagging material. So let's say the way that downtown Athens is being done right now is you, we get people to essentially clean buildings and then after that, there is an anti-tagging material passed. So then the person who finds a tag, let's say, can just clean it with soap and water. From a point of view, from, yeah, graffiti can add a character, but you know, somehow the city is very busy in itself already. I have the feeling graffiti at some occasions are spotted and placed in, in spots in the city that are somehow they become more of an art and not, not that in a visual distraction. And the message they deliver sometimes, it's a message that, yeah, it can be, it can reach out the spectators. Most of the case, almost that's not the case. There are graffitis uh, that are creating a visual pollution. There is the, the Temple of Poseidon, um, which is in Sunion has a lot of, not graffiti, but if we say that this is the first graffiti by very known poets and philalens, people like that they, they loved Greece in the 30s, the 20s, in the 18th century, on the temple itself, people were scratching their names. So you see very known people having scratched their names as a pre-graffiti, <laughs> you know, situation. So I think it's good and it has to stay. I wouldn't really believe that it can be controlled. I think it can look like um, things are neglected, but I think it's kind of hypocritical. Um, like a few years ago, the Polytechnio building, I don't know if you remember, like this um, team went and like painted the entire building, which was ballsy and kind of awesome. Um, and I liked what they did. And there was this uproar that this is ridiculous and they're destroying a monument and there's no respect for them. So it was cleaned up. And I don't think if anyone had noticed that that building was graffitied like before as well. And it's been graffitied since. And there's never been an uproar. It was just that someone went and like did it so audaciously and they did one thing. Um, so, you know, if the city of Athens could manage to clean the place up, I'd, I'd support it, I'd congratulate it. Um, I don't think my faith in the ability of the city of Athens is that big. I, I think it needs it. I think it, it adds, um, I think it adds to the soul of the city. And, you know, people might say that, you know, it's, it's ugly, but then, you know, no one ever said that a soul needs to be pretty. It could be ugly, it could be dirty, really. There's, there's, it, it, it does have a vibe. It has a vibe to it. It's easy to live in. Um, you know, uh, anyone that's creative that comes here can, can continue being creative. Uh, if you're, you know, if you want everything to be really neat and on time, and you know, or kind of like uh, obsessive over things, you're gonna have a really hard fucking time. But if you're kind of, you know, just an artist and w that wants to produce, that wants a big space to live in, you could find really nice spaces for next to nothing.
I have the feeling the Greek people are attached to the arts and the Greek society, one of the best products it has, it's not exploited in the best way, it's art. It's a very artistic uh, environment. Uh, that's, but it ends there, that's the only thing that it is. I think Athens being Athens is, is good. There's, there's no point in complaining about what Athens is or isn't, as is the case with any city. A city is what it is. You, you, you try and build and create and, and, and push things forward within the context of that city. It's not about what Greece or Athens lacks. It's about you know, what you can do with what it has.